Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, it's been a while since I've done a fermenting related video and I've been getting some questions about some of the different things I do with my ferments and I thought I would address at least one of those questions today and show you what else I've got going on. I've got a lot of different things fermenting right now and I just, just want to do a little overview on that and then I'll get to what I want to show you. So right here, this is part of an experiment. I am, um, this is just about done. And this is an apple wine that I'm making. Normally when I'd make wine, I used to do it a lot. I would make it in one gallon jugs, but because I was using apple chunks, I wanted to um, do this in jars. So I had Patrick drill some holes in the top to fit my, um, the bung and the, um, and the airlock so I can make it in these. And I will talk more about this and maybe do a video on how I made it. Um, I'll explain why I don't actually drink anymore. And this isn't going to be made for consuming as a drink because I just don't do that anymore. I have other purposes for this and I'll be covering that in future videos. So this is one thing and these are almost done. I actually uh, have a hydrometer coming finally and getting around to ordering one that so that I can know what the alcohol content of that this is because that's going to be important for the purpose I'm going to be using this for. Now this is and you can tell I just got it started. It's my latest batch of just orange uh, elderberry kefir or kefir however you want to pronounce it. I think either way works. And you can tell I just got started because usually the elderberries, it doesn't take much. It turns it dark purple. And I'm liking this one the best, especially if I add a little bit of vanilla. The raspberry is good too, but this one is my favorite. That little teeny pinch of baking soda. I had somebody in my last video say they tried the baking soda and they didn't like it. I would suggest trying it again and putting less in because if you can taste the baking soda, you're putting in too much. It's just a little tiny pinch and it's enough to really get it even more fizzy than usual. Okay, and then right here is my fresh batch of water kefir grains, you know, in the in the coconut sugar water. And I again, I also use uh, cane sugar, organic cane sugar for that. I don't like using just totally coconut sugar. Just I don't like the flavor it makes in the kefir, but um, the combination of the two seems to work really good. Now, other things I have going on is I did start a batch of kimchi. Now this, this doesn't look like my normal kimchi in the fact that it's not red. Usually, usually I put in a whole bunch of cayenne pepper and it gets it, it turns it real red. Well, first of all, I just started this and the color is going to change as it goes along. And you can see at the bottom, some of the uh, cayenne pepper has gone down to the bottom. So I got to kind of shake this up now and then. So I did put a little bit in, but the reason I didn't put in as much as I normally did is I, I tried putting in a, a hot pepper into this as well. I don't even know what it's called. I can't remember. It's a yellow pepper, but it's very spicy. Um, anyway, very good. Um, so I'm anxious to see how this is going to turn out. I just started it today and this is made, this isn't using the uh, traditional brine method. This is using my own homemade fermentation starter. Uh, and this has been my favorite way because it, um, even though the brine method is awesome, I did it for years. The thing I like about using the fermentation starter is it requires so much less salt to do because you don't have to do the full brine and all that kind of stuff. I just mashed it in there with the, one of the wooden rolling pins that Mr. Rain made me. Mashed it down in there and put just enough salt for flavor. And um, anyway, and in three days I have a nice, wonderful, bubbly kimchi. It's really great. So if you haven't seen, um, if you're new to my channel and you don't know anything about my fermentation starter, I'm going to be going over some of that right here. But you can find a how-to video right up here and I also for those who are interested in I've had people asking me for more of a written one I do have blog posts on how to make this and some of my other things I'll be putting more blog posts out with written recipes I link to my blog page in uh, in every video at least my more recent ones over the past few months and I also have been linking it at the end in the end cards of every video 
So you can find my blog page there. So don't forget to look in the end cards or in the description box box or in the description box below. And don't forget to hit that show more button to find all the links to everything and our contact information in there. So on to the fermentation starter. So I'll show you a couple of the ones I have here. Now you can see how bubbly this one is and I haven't fed it yet. I just, it's been sitting in the refrigerator for quite a while. And this is one I decided to try making with pineapple just to see how well it would work. Cause I find different fruits when making my fermentation starter gives me different results. Um, in the end though, I almost always end up with a good batch. Some take longer, like the blueberry when I initially started it and I found other some of my other subscribers said the same thing about the blueberry when I initially started it it took a long time for it to really get fizzy compared to everything else that took up to three days uh, this one took about five days for it to get really good and fizzy but it's made a great starter overall and uh, I've been very happy with it um, I do plan on changing out the fruit in this eventually, but I'm going to wait until I have some fresh blueberries. This will be good until then, and I'm not worried about it. And then I'll just take out the, the old blueberries and put some fresh ones in. So since I don't have any fresh blueberries right now, I just have frozen ones and I don't feel like thawing them out just for this, then I will wait, you know, then I'll just wait on this one. I'm going to be doing a different one today, changing out. And this one I'm going to feed, even though it looks like it doesn't need it. And I think it's because pineapple's pretty sweet. But since it's been sitting in the refrigerator for a while, and I'm afraid I'm going to forget about it, uh, I'm going to go ahead and feed it. Now, I've had fermentation starters sit in there for quite a while, um, like this one, and not get fed and... As long as it still has a little bit of fizziness, you should be able to get it going again. But if it starts tasting like wine, like this one did, then it's gone too long. It shouldn't taste like wine. But you can get it back to its really lively state by simply feeding it. So I'm just gonna add probably about a teaspoon of sugar to this. It doesn't look like it needs much. And I like using the Tatler lids for these and then just kind of shake it up and I'm gonna leave it out on the counter for a little, you know, for a few hours just to kind of get to room temperature and then check it and then I'm gonna stick it back in the fridge. Now, the one, and I've already fed this one today. I just pulled this one out and you, this is the one I used to get my kimchi started. And then this one, um, I'm going to be downsizing this one because now that I had initially increased it up to a quart because I was using this for making bread, but now that I've always seemed to have at least three fermentation starters going, I don't feel the need to have so such a big jar of the raisin. And you'll see the red in there. That's because I added, to freshen it up a while back, I added some goji berries instead of adding more raisins. So what I'm gonna do today is I'm gonna actually filter out all the fruit and put this in a pint-sized jar and whatever's left, you can either drink it, you can, do whatever you want with and then I'm going to be putting in some fresh dehydrated goji berries and uh, I think and though you can use these fruits like making putting it in bread or just eating them however you want I'm going to go ahead and give these to my chickens because I know they just love this stuff like when I make the raisin vinegar and stuff like that and I give them the raisins from that, they love it. And I know it's super good for them. So I'm just going to do that. But think of some possibilities of different things you can use these fruits in so that, you know, don't, don't just throw them out. So I'm gonna filter out everything. And part of the reason I wanna filter it all out is some of the stuff is just getting kind of icky looking in there. It's not hurting anything. But we just kind of have this way of we like things to look more like this and i notice the raisins they start to degrade after a while and just kind of make it look a little gross so i'm going to take all this fruit out and again like i said i'm going to throw this out to my chickens and i'm going to go do that right now instead of sitting it on my counter well i watched them for a minute and they went right for the raisins because the raisins they know and they know they love them they looked at the goji berries uh, a little skeptically but I think they're gonna try them once they finish the raisins and we'll see what they think about them so what I'm gonna do is 
go ahead and pour this in here and then the rest of this I can turn into a soda if I want. So I'm going to set that aside. And I have a video on how I use my fermentation starter to make a natural healthy soda, uh, fruit soda. So um, you can go check that out and I will link to it right up here. Now, onto the goji berries. Now what, one of the things I was going to say, at this point you don't really need, uh, though I've never left it plain like this, I don't see the need to keep adding fruit to it as long as you keep feeding it and it's alive. However, um, if nothing else, the thing I like about adding fruit is that it keeps some good uh, vitamins and minerals and stuff going into your fermentation starter, just giving it more of a healthy boost. And I do think the fruit does help keep it lively, but you're giving it sugar every so often. So the sugar is feeding it to keep it alive anyway. Well, let's put a few more in. And I don't really need to give it any more sugar right now. But I like to put that Tatler lid on and then I'm going to shake it about a little bit. And you can actually see all them bubbles in there. So this is a pretty healthy fermentation starter. Now I do have several videos out on how I use my fermentation starter for all kinds of things from fermenting pickles, kimchi, making bread even, and using this in replace of conventional store-bought yeast, and um, even fermenting flowers and all kinds of stuff. So I will link to that playlist right up here and you can check out all the different ideas. Oh, and fermenting eggs too. And it's, it's worked wonderfully for whatever it is I want to ferment, fermenting vegetables, fruit, whatever. Um, but I'll go ahead and go over real quick how I do it. So when I go to make my kimchi, I simply strain off one quarter cup of the liquid and add it to every quart jar. So that means if you're going to do a half gallon jar, you're going to use a half cup. If you're going to do a whole gallon, you're going to use a whole cup of your liquid. And then after you do that, then you just top it back off with some fresh filtered water of some sort, not your city tap water. You don't want chlorine and fluoride in this stuff. You want to make sure it's a good clean water. And then, um, and then add a little bit more sugar to it, like a about a tablespoon is good to a jar this size. And then let it sit on the counter. Once it, you know, it takes a few hours at most. Um, sometimes a full day is fine. And once you see it really fizzy and bubbly in there, then just stick it back in your refrigerator and it can last in there for a very long time. When I was first making this years ago, I used to always keep it on top of my fridge, but then I had to feed it every single day. And uh, it's better just to keep it in the refrigerator and <clears throat> then you don't have to feed it as much and go through as much sugar. Now, some other things people talked about was sugar. The sugar, um, first of all, I recommend you, you make sure you use a good organic sugar. You can use coconut sugar. You can also use raw honey. I did an experiment and I have a video on that too on using raw honey for making a fermentation starter and it works great. The only reason I don't use it is because honey is a pretty uh, precious commodity here and rather expensive where I can get organic uh, cane sugar and use that for making my fermentation starter for a lot less money. Now I do have friends that have been giving us honey but I'd rather save the raw honey for more special things rather than my fermenting. Because here's the deal, and this is the other thing that people get concerned about when it comes to making, whether it be kombucha or kefir or the fermentation starter, whatever it is, you have to have sugar of some sort to get it fermenting. That's what it feeds off of. Once it, it feeds on the sugar, it takes it and converts it into something else. It is no longer the same thing and so you don't have to have the same concern over that going into your body if you're trying to stay away from sugar so you don't have to have the same concerns about consuming the sugar because it's no longer the same substance anymore it's actually now turned into something healthy and more gut friendly so remember that it's it's totally different it's just like when you make vinegar you have to have sugar to make vinegar 
and the sugar gets conver converted into alcohol, which then gets converted into vinegar. So it's no longer sugar anymore. And so don't worry about your vinegar um, and the sugar content. You have to have sugar or some sort of carbohydrate or you're not going to get vinegar. Okay, so I hope that answered a few questions that people had and I got to finally see me um, changing out the fruit in my fermentation starter. And don't be afraid to sample all different kinds of fruits. I've made my fermentation starters with raspberries with high success, apples. In fact, that one I made with the honey was also using apples from my tree. Um, ginger was what I used to use when I first started making these, was just ginger with the skin on. I don't know, I've used so many different types of fruits over the years, I don't even remember. But blackberries, any kind of berries, I mean, they're all great. Any fruit will work. Peaches, strawberries, those, those are great too. So just experiment. It doesn't cost, it's so cheap to do um, that if you tried, even if you wanted to do like a half pint jar of each and see which ones, do several side by side and see which ones um, respond better and which ones you like better, when it really, when it comes to the flavor though of whatever it is you're fermenting, it's so watered down that it's really not going to change the flavor much. Now ginger, a ginger based one is really good for kimchi, um, but still I've not noticed, you know, using a blueberry or an apple or a pineapple or a raspberry in making kimchi might sound weird, but I don't taste the fruit in it when I do that. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's really not an issue. And yes, raisins work great. You can use dried fruits. They work just fine. Frozen fruits can sometimes work good and sometimes not so good. And so again, for the start to finish process on how to get this going in the first place, it's super easy. Just go check out that video I linked to at the beginning of this. Or you can just go ahead and click on that eye and you'll see the drop down menu and um, you'll find that video in there. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.